Have you ever wondered what happened to the legendary Chuck Norris? I recently saw a video he made and I was shocked. He's in his 80s and still kicking butt and working out and staying active. He did this by just making one change. Chuck says he still feels like he's in his 50s. His wife even started doing this one thing too and she's never felt better. She says she feels 10 years younger, her body looks leaner, and she has energy all day. Chuck made a special video that explains everything. Make sure you watch it by going to chuckdefense.com forward slash inspired or by clicking on a link below this video. It'll change the way you think about your health. Once again, that's chuckdefense.com forward slash inspired or click on a link in the description below to watch the video now. If the legendary Chuck Norris can do this at 81 years old, so can you. Watch his method by clicking on the link in the description box below. chuckdefense.com forward slash inspired. What role um, in the Middle East again does Israel play in this? Israel was created as the instrument to bring about the Battle of Armageddon and the fulfillment of prophecy. A war that would be so terrible where nuclear weapons will be used so that the American citizens and the other people in the world will get down on their knees and beg for no more war. And what is the answer to that? They're going to be told the only way we can guarantee no more war is if we destroy the sovereignty of nations and we come together as one humanity in a one world government. Now I'm telling you, unless the American people wake up and stop it, starting in about 1996, the Battle of Armageddon will become a reality. I had a friend, Nick Rockefeller, who was one of the Rockefeller family. Uh, when I was running for governor in Nevada, he came to me, introduced himself to me through an attorney. We started talking about things, and one of the things that we used to talk about was the ultimate plan of the banking industry, what they wanted to accomplish. All over the world, they all work together. They're all central banks, and they're all part of the Communist Manifesto. The ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers. And, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and the European constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, and they want to create a new currency called the Amero. The whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be in those chips. There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. He's the one who told me 11 months before 9-11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. And out of that event, we were going to invade Afghanistan to run pipelines from the Caspian Sea. We were going to invade Iraq to take over the oil fields, establish a base in the Middle East and make it all part of the New World Order. And we'd go after Chavez in Venezuela. And I remember he was telling me how, <laughs> how you're going to See soldiers looking in caves for people in, in uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and all these places. And there's going to be this war on terror, of which there's no real enemy. And the whole thing is a giant hoax, you know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. I used to say to them, what, what's the point of all this? You have all the money in the world you need. You have all the power you need. What's the point? You know, what's the end goal? And he said the end goal is to get everybody chipped, to control the whole society, to have the bankers, the, the elite people, controlling the world. They wanted me to join their side because I was a mover and a shaker, and rather than me opposing them, to join them. It was real simple. And uh, he tried to recruit me into that situation, and um, I didn't go for it. You know, I remember one time he said to me, you join us, so you, so you have an ID card, Aaron, you know, you have a chip and your chip will say KMA on it. And uh, I said, what does KMA mean? He said, it means kiss my ass. <laughs> and anybody stops you, a cop or whatever, and you show them your card or your chip, and uh, they'll, they'll not leave you alone, because you're one of us. What, why are you fighting for the people for? What, what is that about? They have to be ruled. The, the Constitution, what, what you're standing for, is only for a few people. It's only a few individuals that can live that way. You know, and uh, we believe that it's best for society to be ruled by an elite people who uh, control everything. And I said, I don't believe that. You know, I believe God put me on this earth to be the best person I could be and put everybody on this earth to be the best they can be, not to be a slave and a sheep to you and, and these people. And I don't understand why you want to control everything. What is the need for that? Hey, hey, Inspire Tribe, my fellow freedom lovers. It's John Nolan here. Thank you so much for tuning in. It is Monday, April 15th, 2024. 
We remain healthy, wealthy, whole, and free. That's the mantra of the Inspired Livestream. Thanks for tuning in on YouTube, X, and Rumble. Uh, this was the great Aaron Russo, um, filmmaker, uh, freedom fighter. Uh, he passed on many years ago, I believe in 2007 or 2009, not quite sure. But this was an interview Alex Jones did with Aaron Russo from 2005. And I played it for a specific reason. Many of you have seen it. Many of you haven't seen it. But I played it for specific reasons, uh, for a specific reason. And and we put the full interview in the description. Uh, you should probably watch it if you haven't or rewatch it. Um, Aaron Russo spoke candidly for, especially for the time when this was recorded. You have to think this is almost 20 years ago now. Spoke very candidly about certain things and, uh, and laid out what the plans were. Now, a lot of this has not come to fruition or only to a small extent or in an abbreviated or a different form. But a lot of these things and others that were planned discussed, uh, put out there where deadlines were on them and they wanted to have them implemented by 2000 and then by 2010 and then by 12 and then by 20. Now we're up to 2030. A lot of these things have not come to fruition. And I think it's a good day to take this Monday. Most people don't like Monday. So let's take this Monday as sort of a little bit of a, a victory celebration. Because we we did have a lot of victories, my friends. And um, I'll tell you this. I have been in this arena, um, not always in front, but behind the scenes for the better part of 25 years. And really out there at least 15 years. And I can tell you that what people see today and what they look when they look at all the headlines, the news, the things that are unfolding, everything, and they'll tell me, what are you talking about? We're nowhere near victory, and it's only crazier and crazier and crazier. And I will give I'll give you that in in some ways that is accurate. In other ways, you're missing the forest for the trees. See, 15 years ago. 90% of the subjects that are in the mainstream arena or at least being talked about, at least being ridiculed in the mainstream arena weren't even talked about. They were nowhere to be seen. Today, you have whole industries dedicated to discovering truth, to bringing it out. You have an explosion in the natural health arena uh, online of people that are just following the breadcrumbs that they're seeing and finding and, and putting this, this out to different audiences. Not everyone can reach everyone out there. You have to have different voices, different appearance, different everything because it speaks to different people. The amount of young folks that are in their 20s or even the late teens, early 20s that are speaking, seeking, sharing truths. Not everything is always accurate. Well, no one is always accurate. But there is an, a, a truly an awakening going through the human family, unlike anything we could have even imagined 10, 15 years ago. And a lot of things have become worse over the years. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of things did not happen. And most people have never even heard about those plans. But they did not happen because we were relentlessly, relentlessly uncovering things together we were relentlessly sharing it with each other. Even before social media, we were gathering, we were talking, we were sharing, we were printing, we were writing, we were singing, we were screaming if necessary, and we brought things to the forefront. And so today, I can sit down in almost any place, and naturally there is a vibrational synchronicity going on, sure, but I can sit down almost anywhere and within half an hour, if I get to talking with someone or less, I will be amazed every single time at um, how open they are or how much information they have on certain subjects that was never part of conversations five, ten years ago. Now, the last four years, as I've said over and over again, were a time that has unleashed um, some, some, you know, for, for a time, it has unleashed hell on the world's populations. 
but it has also given them the opportunity to discover so many truths, to discover so many lies and deceptions first. I'll give you just a little clip here by a German doctor. And, and I think everyone should, should see this. This is sort of interesting because everything he shares in this minute-long clip, uh, he has uh, actually used stats by government agencies for. This is always interesting when you see that. And I want to thank our dear friend, Dr. Northrup, uh, for texting us over yesterday. Check this out. Sank die Klinikbelegung in Deutschland bundesweit im Jahre 2020 auf ein historisches Allzeittief, sagt das Bundesgesundheitsministerium. Zweitens gab es 2020 und 2021 nicht mehr schwere Atemwegserkrankungen als sonst. Corona kam, die Influenza verschwand zeitweise, sagen die Sentinelldaten des RKI. Drittens starben im Jahr 2020 altersstandardisiert nicht mehr Menschen als sonst auch. Erst seit 2021 nimmt die Sterblichkeit zu, sagen Daten des Statistischen Bundesamts. Viertens waren Menschen, die mit oder an Corona verstarben, im Mittel 83 Jahre alt und die übrigen Verstorbenen im Mittel 82 Jahre alt, sagen RKI und Statistisches Bundesamt. Fünftens und letztens schnitt das Masken- und Lockdown-freie Schweden besser ab als Deutschland, sagt die WHO. See, and this is what I meant earlier. Um, some people will see me in my appearance and, and they just won't listen, right? They'll be repelled by that. But they will listen to this guy because he looks proper and he's got the suit and tie and he looks very, uh, you know, like a serious dude. And he probably is, but he's presenting facts, right? So I, I welcome that. I welcome that from every section of society, um, people have crossed over into a movement that is truly only defined by the desire to find truth and by the desire to live in freedom. Those are the only two inherent qualities that almost, almost everyone that's authentic in this movement shares. There's really not much more. It's not a religious system. It's not a belief system. You can, you can do, do, do and believe as you wish, but most people here want the truth and they want to live in freedom. And we are getting ever closer to having this mass realization, how that actually can come about. And once again, it is not by believing in the proverbial knight on a white horse. And there will be at times knights that will appear in a white horse and some will have some good things to, to say and, and, and contribute and others won't. But that's not the real solution. The real solution remains by finding all this knowledge, by finding all the truth and the deceptions, by realizing that for too long we have simply given our power away. And that was the conspiracy. By, by you and I and, and all of us giving power away and believing in others, in, in government, believing in institutions, believing in somebody else who will take care of us, we've given our power away. And hence, they have assumed more and more and more of it. And now there is a realization going through the people. And, and I, I want to show you a graphic. I've shared this before, and I pulled this up again because I think this is so eye-opening for so many. I want to share this with you. Let's look at this here. This is the hierarchy, if you will, very simplified, but the hierarchy that people are realizing to be the truth more and more and more. There is a creator and all that is source consciousness. Now, some people don't want to define that as something personified. Some people want to think of a, an old man with a white beard. Whatever you think of, that's up to you. But there is something, there is an, an all-encompassing consciousness or energy that created everything from the beginning. From that, our, our human, our spirit was born and created. And through us and our desire to organize in some way, shape, or form, and when I say our, it's just groups at large. Every group that lives together, every family, every, every clan has some sort of system. We created governments. We created a system. But this is the hierarchy, right? This is how it is in its origins. 
And then you have natural rights, inalienable rights that come with you as you're born. But what has happened, if you look at this graphic, this graphic was sort of um, God or the creator was really removed from this equation. And the government, the system, and government is just one arm of one tentacle of the system, has put itself in place of the creator above man and woman. And that's why everything is so wrong the way it is. But now more and more people are realizing, hold on a minute. The system didn't create me. These people that are claiming authority over me didn't make me. They don't have any rights over me unless I give I give them those rights. I, I give it to them. The true victory, my friends, is not, uh, you know, sort of tomorrow we'll wake up and everything will be fine again. That's not the true victory. The first true victory that is very near is that a critical mass realizes what I just showed you here is that we are sovereigns, not because we have certain citizenships, not because the government told us we have certain rights. It doesn't matter what a system tells you. You are, and because you are, you are a sovereign. Everything that comes afterwards is whether consciously or subconsciously, a choice. At some point, we weren't asked, we didn't sign a contract, I agree with you, but at some point, our consent was implied. And our consent wasn't just implied in relationship to the government, but our consent was implied that we want our water to be fluoridated. Our consent was implied that we want our skies to be sprayed. Our consent was implied that we want all these toxins and preservatives and all these fake uh, uh, chemicals in our food. At some point, all these things were implied. And now, through this revolution of knowledge, through this revolution and awakening of spirituality, and through the reawakening of sovereignty, the sovereign human spirit, people are withdrawing their consent. They're saying, no, I don't consent to this any longer. Next month, and we'll talk about it in depth, next month, um, the WHO will uh, try to pull a full-on power grab at the end of the month in Geneva as they will claim authority over many aspects of the nations and hence the people. And if, if they pull that off, if they do it on paper, it still doesn't mean that you and I and all of us have to play along with it. Because ultimately, what people are realizing, it's black ink on white paper. Today, it's digital, but it's the same principle. It is a spell. It's just a spell they put us under. You know what? I'll just, I'll just identify uh, as someone who doesn't know how to read from here on out. People can identify as anything. Else. So I'll identify as somebody who can't read. And as somebody who can't read, I can't follow all those um, oppressive rules and regulations. I'll still follow my conscience that tells me, do no harm. Don't put anyone in danger. Uh, don't commit fraud. You know, basically do no harm. I'll, 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 I'll adhere to that any day of the week and that let that me be my guiding principle. So how do I say that from the awakening of the individual, how do we get to victory? And what do I mean by victory, by the way? Um, to me, Victory, the first the or this the first victory I just shared, the second victory will be when through that, um, we will, you know, very, very in a tangible way, remove these dark forces or what's left of them from any any levers and positions of power and and have let them have zero from here on out. We we can't we can only invite entities in, we can only invite people in, but if they don't uh, want to come and don't want to join and don't want to, uh, you know, see the light, if you will, well, then we will remove them um, in a very orderly way, the way it should be done, from all levers of power. And uh, we will stop any and all attempts that push people down, that uh, subdue people, and that aim at lowering our consciousness because that's what the game is the game is to keep our consciousness in constant fear and constant worry constant doubt about the future 
And you would be surprised that if tomorrow, because a conscious critical mass is taking conscious critical action, if tomorrow we uh, turn off the news propaganda, if tomorrow we cancel the fake politicians' press conferences, uh, we will have removed about 80% of the world's problems overnight. Not even kidding you. The perpetuation of fake stories and fake problems, right? The perpetuation of a psyop. And uh, the first clip that we saw, by the way, in the beginning of this live stream was, was of Bill Cooper in 1993. Uh, supposedly, this was a CNN interview. I, I, I couldn't find the source. I, I think I saw it before, but I've seen the clips over the years. And where he talked about the true purpose of the establishment of Israel. Um, we we knew that this Armageddon that he talks about was truly scheduled for the 90s, the mid to late 90s. And then a lot of miraculous things happened in Israel, in the Middle East, and around it. And even though they wanted to reignite this after 9-11 and reignite those wars and multiple attempts thereafter, to this day, to this day, uh, the Big Bang, as they wanted to produce it, has not come about. There is something, and I, I'm, I'm telling you that a big part of it is human consciousness, that continues uh, to, to disturb their plans, to delay them. And I think at critical moments, conscious human beings stop following unlawful orders, stop following immoral orders. They don't show up uh, when their superiors want them to. And there's nothing they can do about it. There's nothing they can do about the awakening of the human spirit, which tells you when it is awakened, it tells you exactly what is right, what is wrong. For those of you who don't believe in right or wrong, uh, you're, at, you're in the wrong place here. There is good, there's bad, there's right, there's wrong. It's very clear lines too. There's not very much uh, wiggle room there, right? But there's uh, there are too many people who have reconnected with that compass, that moral compass, that spiritual compass. And they don't care what consequences might come from them not following a wrong order. They don't do it. They don't care what consequences might come from them not going along with something that they know is hurtful to other people. And this is one of the key elements when you're not willing, when, when, when you lose fear, especially fear of death, which is a fake, uh, a fake phenomenon. The way death is portrayed is fake. It's, it's completely, uh, you know, um, divorced from reality. There is no death. There is an there is an end to this human vessel. There's an end to this uh, biological computer, but there is no death as such. There's a transition, right? A transition in this case, currently out of this matrix too, right? But when you lose fear of that and realize that ultimately you are an eternal being, why would you ever do something that you know to be wrong? What consequences could you possibly fear? And this is the point where so many people are at and why, why I say victory is nearer than we think. And yes, we've had a lot of casualties over the last years. Don't I acknowledge all of it. I know we've had losses and I know we've, we've been defeated, but we've also had tremendous victories. And the way we've come together as a human family uh, in, the, in the early 2020s, it's, it's crazy. We're almost mid-decade here. In the early 2020s, the way we've come together in those years, the way we have uh, banded around the, the, the principles of freedom and truth, um, absolutely unwavering in the wave of the greatest um, opposition and tyranny we've ever seen as a human family in this at the same time. People have seen it in places isolated in countries, but never has the world experienced the kind of ty tyranny we've seen in the early 2020s. And we did not give in. A lot of us did not give in and we stayed strong and we, we, we came together from all corners of the earth, no matter what the religious background was, no matter what the professional background was, no matter what we looked like or what we might believe in otherwise, we came together for truth and freedom. 
And I said it then, this is the greatest alliance in human history, the Alliance for Freedom. And then when that pressure was taken off, um, you could see that the, the, the fault lines, the divide was starting to get bigger again. And now we have to come together even more and realize we're still in this epic, epic battle, yes. And we have to build on our victories and build it on truth and freedom every single day. But make no mistake, we will be victorious. We will reclaim our domain. We will reclaim our humanity fully. We will reclaim the human spirit fully. We will reclaim our undisturbed relationship with our true creator. And we will reclaim the earth as our dedicated space to live on and to be a harmonious species, which we were designed to be which I think we were in the beginning, not the fake beginning, not the uh, all the crap that came afterwards, the real beginning, we will reclaim that. And we are reclaiming that. And it begins by reclaiming it in our own lives, by becoming that which we truly want to see in the world. There's no other way. There's no other way. And we can be warriors, but we can be uh, merciful warriors, and we can be to the greatest extent possible peaceful warriors, right? And not let ourselves be pulled down into those lower vibrations of hatred and and uh, uh, vengefulness and all that. You know, there's there's this rumor out there that uh, Klaus Schwab is, uh, you know, deathly ill, that he might be dying. And, and, and people are out there um, rejoicing in that. And I, I get this, okay? I, I get that um, people kind of don't have a lot of sadness when, when someone who has conducted himself in such ways leaves. But let's not gloat in that. Let's just focus on the task at hand. There's no gloating necessary. Guy's leaving. He's on his way out. It's okay. Bye. Uh, <laughs> you know. But let's focus on the tasks at hand. And let's continue to show up every single day and do what we can with what we have where we are. Do what we can with what we have where we are. It's the most important thing. It's the excuse killer. Because everyone is, has something that they can do. And not worry too much about the things that we cannot do. There's plenty of things we can't do. I can't. I really don't have any direct influence on what's happening or isn't happening in Israel. I have no direct influence on what's happening or isn't happening in Ethiopia. But here where I am and in the sphere that I'm active in, I do have that influence and I plan to show up for it truthfully and authentically every single day and do what I can with what I have where I am. And that is the key for victory. Our friends who were in kinetic, in real war zones, who fought real battles and survived them, they will always tell you remain actionable. Look at what you can do and, and do the best you can in that arena and it will have the biggest possible impact. Plan as best you can, right? Make sure that you have all your, uh, that, that everything's covered, but, but do what you can with what you have where you are. Don't worry too much about the things you cannot influence. It'll drive you crazy and you won't have any results from that, right? And results is what keeps us going. When we can see that we have little successes, when we can see that we have little victories, it it feeds us for bigger victories and for more. And if I take, if I gauge the temperature in the world today, there is on the surface more chaos. There is clearly, it's louder, it's more chaotic, but this is what I know a healing process to look like. This is what I've seen in my own life, not just with not just not just psychologically, but physically as well. I used to be a, a professional athlete, had a lot of injuries. And so healing, when it truly started to happen, was as painful in the beginning as the injury itself. And it was chaotic. My body was out of bounds and, and out of balance. And I had to deal with that. And this is where we're in. We are in a healing, uh, on a healing journey. Some days better, some days worse, but we are. And, and in that, you will have a lot of chaos. And remind yourself that the world looked so different just 10 years ago. Maybe remind yourself where you were, what your priorities were, 
what your where your attention was on and what it's on today. And give yourself a tap on the shoulder every now and say, okay, you've come a long way. Uh, congratulations. Now keep going. Keep going. Uh, there's also this saying, if you're going through hell, you know, <laughs> keep going till you're out of there. And uh, I believe in all, with all my heart that we will uh, celebrate more and more victories. And every victory that we have, they will try to make it look like it's our defeat. And every defeat... Uh, that they have, they'll try to make it look like it's their victory. That's the game. That's that's the art of war. We have to learn how to play that. That's why I said, take every defeat, turn it into a victory. Find the positive, find the silver lining, and ride that wave, baby. Ride that wave. Okay, don't give up. Don't give up now. And what's the alternative, too? What's the alternative? What are we going to do? We're going to turn around now? We're going to stop now? We're going to give up now? And we're going to do what? Go back into the matrix? Try to reprogram? Try to become part of that insane system? No. Heck no. Who's going to do that? Nobody in their right mind would do that. We have to keep going. Knowing that this inner drive, this deep desire that there could be and will be and must be something better than what we have right now, it must come from somewhere. There's, there's a drive, there's a light in your heart, there's a desire that drives you. It must come from somewhere. Trust in its authenticity. Trust that whatever dreams and whatever desires and whatever visions were put into your heart, they were put there for a reason. And that you truly can live them. You can see them. You can feel them. You can taste them. That that is a distinct possibility in your life. Remember that. Every single day, start your day with gratitude for the things you have, even if that's very little. I'll tell you, um, some of those most influential or, or, or most consequential moments in our lives, I remember, were uh, sitting in a beat up old truck. Remember those, those old box trucks? Um, rusty could barely start. And the handle was broken off. The window wouldn't come down. You had to climb through the other side of the door. Um, the, 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 the radiator was leaking. Uh, everything was falling apart. That truck was running on, on pure hope. And that was the only possession in the world we had left, by the way. No more house, no more nothing. And I remember my deepest moments of gratitude I had in the seat of that truck I would sit there at 4 a.m. in the morning uh, or 5 a.m. Uh, in my prayer, in my meditation, just giving thanks, giving thanks for the ideas, the inspiration, the breath that I could draw, um, the glass of water I had just had, and giving thanks for that internet cafe that I'm going to go to uh, because that's the only place I can work in right now and do something and create something. I'm telling you, I know what it feels like uh, to grasp for things to be thankful for, but there are always plenty of those things in your life if you give yourself permission to see them. The wonder, the beauty, the joy, it's all still there. And if you can find it in your heart, if you can find it in your heart to be grateful for every experience that you've had, for every piece of information and knowledge that you've gathered, for every wisdom that is in you, uh, if you can find the ability to be grateful for air, for the sky, for a conversation, for a beautiful song, for whatever, find it, feel it, feel it until tears are streaming down your face, flowing down your face. You will see, you will see that built on that gratitude, life will begin to unfold its abundance in within you and around you. Trust me. I haven't been through those periods more than once and and having nothing, nothing in the external world to trust in any longer because there was nothing there. There's nothing to fall back on. Those were the key moments in my life sometimes. Those were the key moments where I knew I don't need to have any evidence I know what I'm made of. I know why I'm here. I know that life is just waiting for me to wake up to my true self. 
It's just waiting for me to realize that. Find that. Today is the day, my friends. Take this Monday and declare it a day of celebration and find things to celebrate, even if it is a tough day, even if you had a tough morning, even if you have challenges, especially when you have challenges. Declare this a, way, a day of victory and celebrate all those little victories you've already had in your life and affirm in clarity that it keeps getting better and better and better. And this is what we're going to do. This is what we will continue to do. And you can shoot, people can shoot arrows at us. They can run campaigns against us. They can deploy their agents and try to scare us or we'll show up. We'll be here. We will show up and be here every single day. And together, my friends, we will be victorious. We will be victorious. Mark my words. Much love to you. Many blessings. We love you. We appreciate you. We'll be back with you again very, very soon.